Coutinho, we were talking about Coutinho, Darth. You got some analysis on him um, in Central I have got some analysis because lots and lots of our fans talk about how good Coutinho was in centre midfield when we nearly won the league. Yeah. Now, that that run of games Indeed. for Coutinho, the, the, the first time he did it was the Everton game, the home game in January 2014. Now, the two preceding games before the Everton game were the 5-3 at Stoke, where we won 5-3 and Coutinho played in the front three. And then we had the doing with a horrendous 2-2 draw at home to Aston Villa, where we basically just got completely overrun in centre mid. Mm. Um, and um, Coutinho was mostly stuck off. If you look at the touch map, wide left in that game. And then for the Everton Benteke, game... Benteke ran as ragged. Yeah. And it, basically, Gerrard was left completely exposed, wasn't he? And, uh, you know, with Henderson and, and we just overrun. So, and then basically for the Everton game, he brought in Coutinho alongside Gerrard and Henderson, very close, very tight in a midfield three. And that was the first game he did it. And then <clears throat> then we, then it also happened in the West Brom game, uh, immediately after the Arsenal home game, Fulham away, Swansea at home, Tottenham at home. And then the last time we saw it was West Ham away. And then it was only half game because he went off injured. And then, then he, 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 you know, there was a couple of games where he played a sub, tip of the diamond and stuff like that. But when he was in the... Um, the only times he was in that midfield three deeper were, the, were those eight games. And then... Basically, it was such a success that we only saw it twice in, t- in the following season under Rodgers, um, or three times. So three times the following season under Rodgers, and they were all in the last six games of the season. So we we had this we had this tremendous thing. Everybody was purring about it, and then we and Rodgers didn't even play it for the next the next three quarters of the season, and then he and then he played it again in his final game before we before we got sacked um, against Everton away. And then Klopp basically didn't play it at all in midfield until the the Man United home game earlier this season. Mm. Um, um, he, he went there against Swansea. He started there against Man United. And then this was the first time we've seen it then. Yeah. So I, this I, was only, only the second league start under Klopp where, where, yeah. he's, done, where he's actually done before, it. Before you go into the numbers, I think there is, a, there is valid reasoning why Rodgers didn't use it. Because that year, you know, Suarez and Sturridge weren't in the team anymore. Coutinho then becomes your de facto star in terms of an attacking player. Yeah. You know what I mean? He started so, in the general, didn't he? Yeah, because mm. at the end of the day, what happens is you lose Suarez straight away. And then Sturridge is injured all that year. Remember, he was, it was terrible that year for goals for us. So yeah. Coutinho becomes your, the person you rely on as your star. So I don't think he could risk... And Drop Sterling, it further back. Ed, you know, yeah, so it was him and Sterling that we were relying on, remember? Uh, Lambert. I mean, Lambert. Yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Green. And, and Balotelli. Oh, Green my Balotelli, God. Yeah. It was horrendous. Yeah. But there you go. I do think there was a reason why. I think he felt, I think the manager probably at that point would have felt, I can't. So, But, but. we can just say that he, we had eight times. He played eight, eight, we made eight starts there in the league in the spring of 2014. And only six in the next three seasons. Nuts. So anyway, 14 starts. That's a total of 1160 minutes. Mm -hmm. In my opinion, that's just about enough. You don't really want to be looking at less than a thousand, really. Uh, Ideally, you'd have closer to 2000. Can we say say that that, that Simon Brundish at this point would have said it's not enough? He does have he he would have raised <coughs> a grievance at this point because yeah, he doesn't think he, it's enough. He'd say, but we're not going to make firm conclusions on it. What we're no. going to do is we're going to say that you know we need to caveat this because it's still subject to a lot of change. Give it another thousand minutes really to, before you start making firm judgments, and nobody should be making conclusive judgments that you know this is you know all we can say is based on what he's done so far, um, this it looks amazing, but it may or may not continue to project like this. Over the you know, if you say if he continues to play it more often next season. So anyway, fourteen starts, eleven hundred and sixty minutes, and the the numbers he generates. I'm going to look at. I'm going to present. I'm going to talk to you about um, shots, number of shots per game, number of chances created per game, um, number of take ons per game, dribbles, and the number of tackles. Tackles one. Um, just just as for you know, because you want a midfielder who can tackle, who can create, who can shoot. Don't you really? You want all yeah. those kind of things. Mm-hmm. So, okay. Coutinho, first of all, I'm going to do when Coutinho plays centre mid role versus when he doesn't play in centre mid. 
Um, and then I'm going to, then we can look at him versus other centre midfielders, his profile. So first of all, he scores more often from deeper positions. Um, his non-penalty goals per 90 minutes is 0.47 from centre mid and 0.26 from when he plays other positions. That's 45% more so far. He shoots less. He, he shoots 26% less, 3.1 per game this t- uh, from centre mid. But his shot conversion is 15% compared to 6.7 elsewhere. Wow. That's so huge. he shoots less, but he scores more. He obviously receives more passes, 54 in centre mid versus 48 elsewhere. Um, and then ob- if, if from, from those more passes, he more goals. He cre- he's creating 20% more chances, 2.6 in centre mid, 2.1 elsewhere. Now, he does dribble less in centre mid, but it's still a high number by everybody else's standards, maybe apart from Wilfred Zaha so, and Eden Hazard. So when he's not in centre mid, he's 4.8 dribbles a match. In centre mid, 4.1. But his success rate for the dribbles is higher. So this is probably more to do with the fact that he's taking on centre midfielders rather than centre backs and full backs, who are maybe better in the duel than mm-hmm. you know centre midfielders. Yeah. So it's 4.1 take ons at 62%, which is excellent. 62% com- for dribble completion is really good, really excellent. Uh, and then when he's playing elsewhere, it's 4.8 at 53%. And then, obviously, you're in the engine room, 3.1 tackles a game versus 1.3 when he plays elsewhere. Now, the com- the flip side of that is he also does get dribbled past a hell of a lot in centre mid, so it's 2.4 a game. That, that, that might be one thing about why he possibly couldn't play there, you know, long term or whatever, because he does get dribbled past a hell of a lot. Maybe if he's part of a three, it's not so bad. Who knows? Anyway, it's just one. It's one. It's one wrinkle that should be noticed. Yeah. So those numbers are, are really good, right? And then mm-hmm. the, so it shows some really, really clear patterns about so far about the differences and how his game changes when he plays deeper versus elsewhere. The really interesting thing is is when we profile that against other centre midfield players, because I asked, I asked, I asked. Uh, you guys, the three of you, to say like find find me any midfielders who shoot three times a game, two and a half chances a game, four take ons a game, and three tackles a game. And it's really hard to find centre midfielders who match even one or two of those. No, we couldn't find it. Roti, what, what was it? Uh, what was it? Uh, what was that? What was yeah, it, a, a lot. Uh, it was a good. I think he was. I'm, I'll go and have a look. I, I, tackles, but that was about it. Yeah, that was it. I found the Navigator one, so I'll have a quick look at that. But it wasn't, he was way off, way off. Because obviously we're linked to Navigator. There's there's rumours today as well that we're after him. But it was just, I mean, Lalana was well low as well, wasn't he? But Lalana was well in the season, has been playing in centre mid, but nothing near what Coutinho's sample shows either. And he's been, he's been very, very good. So just, just, just so Lallana in centre mid, 1.9 shots, 1.5 chances, 1.9 tackles, 2.1 dribbles. That's pretty good overall. That's pretty healthy. But again, no, no it's it's all 30, 50 percent less than yeah. What the Nab- 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 numbers, 1.4 shots. So what was Coutinho's? 3.1. Okay, 2.7 dribbles and 4.1 Coutinho. 1.3 chances created. 2.6. That's double from Coutinho. And then. Uh, 2.4 tackles. Um, 3.1 from Coutinho. So there. Coutinho beat him in everything, pretty um, much. Sai listed some players like Tony Kroos. For example, he was he, he would beat Phil for chances created, um, but not for anything else. Um, and then he said, Meza Urza, when he plays in centre mid, 2.6 um, chances a game. Tony Kroos, 2.7, uh, with 1.3 take-ons. So... It's incredible. Um, Luka Modric, 1.4 chances a game, two tackles, one shot, 1.3. Yeah, so it's... No one else profiles like that. With the the caveat, of course, 1160 minutes, right? You need to... Let's... Let's come on... Let's let's double that number of minutes and then let's see. If if we've still got this, if he's still doing this, he's basically going to be the best centre midfield player in world football. If he's still doing it. Yes, if he's still doing it after another thousand minutes, that is very, very, very impressive. No doubt about it. If, if he's doing it after four thousand minutes, he is the best central midfielder in the world. Yeah. <laughs> Mate, and we might just sell him this way anyway. 
<laughs> I don't want to depress you. <laughs> <laughs>